Welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen, and today I'm making a soap using this fragrance from Nurture Soap. It's called Orange Cognac, and this smells fabulous. I've made lotion bars with this and uh, candles and sugar scrubs, but I've never soaped with this fragrance, and it does get good reviews. It says it doesn't cause acceleration, no discoloration. It doesn't have any vanillin. Uh, and it smells fabulous. So I'm very anxious to try this fragrance today. And I'm gonna do something fun today for my lye solution. I'm going to be using uh, Home Rendered Huey, W-H-E-Y. And it's the uh, protein portion when you make cheese or yogurt, that watery liquid, that's the Huey. Uh, it's wonderful. And it's got uh, some natural lactic acid sugars in there. So it's gonna make a beautiful lather in this bar. And um, Huey has some really fancy properties, but this is a bar of soap that will clean you. And I will let you do your own research on Huey and why you might want to add that to your soap. It's a fun ingredient. I've got some, I'm gonna use it today. Uh, let's talk about the colors, orange cognac. I'm like, cognac is kind of a dark liqueur and orange, obviously we know what that is. So I decided to go with oranges today and I'm going to use Sunset Orange from Be Scented. Love that. And Siesta Sunset Orange from Wholesale Supplies Plus. I thought these two swirled together would look really beautiful in this soap for our orange cognac. And I am considering putting down on top, and we've had this discussion before, if you've been with me any, any amount of time, you know that I go back and forth on non-soapy items on top of your soap. Some people love it, some people really don't, and some people are in between. I'm finding myself being in between. I used to really not like it, but sometimes it's so appropriate, it's hard to resist. And I got these orange slices from Soma Sundries. If you have a dehydrator, you could make your own. I don't have a dehydrator. I bought them from there. Uh, Soma Sundries is great for gemstones, botanicals. I really like their website. So I will leave a link down below for where I got these and I might add these on top. I'm going back and forth. I'm thinking about it. I don't, oh man. I wish y'all were here with me and I could take like a real time um, poll and <laughs> vote yes or no. I'll probably put them on top just cause I have them and orange cognac, you know, it kind of goes with the theme. That's what I'm thinking about. So now I have to go get my whey out of the freezer and get it prepped and ready to go to make my live solution and get everything ready. And we will come back and make some orange cognac soap. All right, we're back with my partially frozen whey. I had it in a Ziploc bag, so it's in like this little envelope shape. It's starting to melt here. I have the proper amount measured out and I'm gonna just add my lye very slowly. As, as it heats up, it will finish melting this. It's kind of like working with ice when you do lye. Um, and we'll see how warm it gets. I might not add silk in here if it's too cool. If it warms up nice, I might throw a little, a little pinch of silk in here. Um, but the silk does not melt when you make cool lye water. It takes that hot lye water to melt the silk, unless you get a liquid silk, which is available. I think Brambleberry carries a amino silk as uh, liquid. Um, so anyway, there's other options, but I have the fibers. So we'll see how warm this gets and we will just take it as it comes. And soap without silk is beautiful also, even though I add it in most of my soaps, but uh, you know, it's not the end of the world if I can't get it in here. Plus, I think all of the wonderful um, benefits of the Huey kind of has its own special appeal. So, you know, it is what it is. But I don't want to scorch the Huey because of the lactic acid, milk sugars, all that. Um, you just want to proceed with caution since I'm not doing the milk and oil method. Uh, this is a good way to make a lye solution. It is gonna turn a bright, bright orangey yellow, and that's normal. It'll bounce back. <laughs> back for soap additives. I just wanted to show you the gorgeous color of this orange cognac. Isn't that beautiful? It smells so good. I'm gonna save this off since I haven't soaked with it before and add it to the colors after everything's blended. So this is going off to the side and I have my oranges all pre-dispersed with just a teeny bit of distilled water. Aren't those pretty? 
Oh my word, it smells good. I really think these colors are gonna represent the fragrance. So for the additives, I'm just gonna do my regular, like I normally do, two tablespoons of colloidal oats and two tablespoons of kale and clay. Just cause that's, you know, that's my thing. I love it. Put it in almost all my soaps and there it is. So let's get this blended up so we can get moving forward. with our whey and this is an obnoxious color but just trust me it will turn creamy beige in the soap after it saponifies um, and this has I did get my Tassa silk fibers in there because it got up to what 174 degrees that was definitely hot enough to melt my silk fibers those are in there and some sodium lactate and I did not add any sugar to this because of all the natural sugars in the whey which will you know and the proteins and all that I just didn't need the sugar in here so and I will keep an eye on this tonight as it goes in the mold and sits I'll just come take a peek at it and make sure we're not getting any overheating issues I will keep you posted if I do but there it is let me get this in here and due to this beautiful orange color not I'm kidding and this orange color I'll probably add just a touch of titanium dioxide in the uncolored portion even though this fragrance says that it does not discolor um, just because I want those oranges to really pop out I won't add a bunch but just a little because you know I just want the swirls to be amazing and I'm planning on doing a hair swirl today so let's get this up to a good emulsion and you're going to see this beige up and turn darker color here as the whey disperses and starts caramelizing the oils and all of that here we go <laughs> love the chemistry there we go hey that's not a bad color it's actually pleasant that whey color was not so pretty and it doesn't smell great either but that um, lye and milks when you mix it together that scent dissipates as soon as the saponification takes place so don't worry about that <laughs> if you're making a milk soap for the first time and you're like whoa that smells terrible it's okay <laughs> trust the process all right let's get our colors over here
are back and it has been a couple days since I made this soap because we had some really big storms coming through Middle Tennessee, knocked our power out for quite a while. Anyway, we're back up and running and look at how beautiful that is. And look, the Huey color bounced back. I'm so happy about that. And I'm glad I put the oranges in because it really kind of goes along with the fragrance of this. I love it. So let's get in here and see how that in the pot swirl came out. Then I've got to get to cutting this and not knocking my oranges out. You know my challenges. So let's get to it. back with the lovely Olga and I am very excited to get in here and see what we've got going on the inside but first I have to slice these without knocking off my little oranges <laughs> so let's get this lined up here luckily they're kind of skinny so hopefully I should be able to do this pretty well I want them in the middle all right let's do it all right we made it first slice down Oh, we're gonna have some pretty swirls. Look at that. Oh, that's beautiful. And the difference between the two oranges is very subtle, but you can see it, it just sort of gives dimension. Oh, I'm a happy girl. Really love these. And this fragrance is very, very nice. I would consider this unisex, um, even though it does have that fruit orange undertone, it's not a sweet scent because of the cognac notes. Uh, it just is a really good, kind of a mature orange scent, I guess, if I had to say it. Oh, I love it. I think we're gonna have some soapy patterns also. So good. So I'm, today I am happy I put the oranges up there. I think they really represent, but I still, man, I am conflicted. I go back and forth. Maybe one of these days I'll just make my mind up and pick a camp, but for now, <laughs> I go back and forth. There you can kind of see the two different oranges. These are lovely. I'm so happy. Yay. All right, let's keep cutting. All right, next loaf. Um, so this way was very interesting to work with. Uh, it, again, you saw it turned that bright, bright orange uh, and it did not smell fantastic when the lye hit it, but there is none of that odd off scent going on today. You only smell the orange cognac fragrance, which I'm so thankful for. And look at that beautiful ivory color. I did put a touch of TD in there, but um, I think overall the fragrance and the Huey did not discolor at the end, which I'm very happy about that. I just think these look beautiful. And I love that it's kind of ivory. To me, it goes with the orange colors also, even more than a bright white. Oops. But yeah, that, um, just be warned, if you've never made a milk soap before, when your lye hits the, uh, when your lye hits that liquid, it can smell <laughs> not very pleasant. So be prepared, but it does bounce back. So don't let it throw you off if you've ever had that happen. You know, don't think, oh no, I've ruined my batch, because you haven't. Just trust the process, let the chemistry take place, and uh, it'll, it'll all come come together in the end. That's what I, that's my opinion. That's what I've found to be true when I make soaps and with milks and they get a little, a little off smelling during the process. And some fragrances take a little while to develop. They might be like the next day when you cut your loaf, they might be very light or a little different scent. And then after a week or so, they kind of bounce back after the whole saponification process finishes. So um, that's also something to think about when you're working with fragrances or essential oils, I guess that could be said for them also. All right, last loaf here. So far we haven't hit any oranges, so <laughs> it's feeling very promising. With skinny embeds, it's not quite as nail biting as when you have the big fat embeds and it's hard to get next or get past them, but we did it. 
Yay. Happy, happy. Oh, these swirls. Look at that. I will definitely do soapy patterns at the end because, you know, I love soapy patterns. I just think they're so fun. Here, should we do a preview for you? Let's do a preview. We'll go this way. Ooh, that looks like a butterfly. Love it. All right, more soapy patterns to come. All right, well, these are going to sit for several hours before I come back in and do my beveling and stamping like I like to do on my soap bars. And so, thank you for joining me today. This was a really fun batch to make, and I love using unique ingredients like whey or beers or things. I just love it. So I appreciate you taking the time. I hope you have a wonderful day.